Well, that uh, glint of sunshine and blue skies may be a bit deceptive. Just had a look on the greenhouse thermometer and last night the temperatures dropped down to 6.7. So that's a sure sign that autumn is on the way. And with that in mind, there's a few jobs on the allotment that I want to get sorted now. So come and join me. Just remove the top off these banana slots. You can see they've dried out nicely. Saying that, the skin's them still wet due to the moisture in the air. So rather than getting damp again, I'm going to harvest these now, tidy them up and store them in some plastic crates. As I said, these are the long red florins, and so they've got a bit more moisture than I want them to be. But nonetheless, they'll dry out, and these really do store for a long time. So if you've never grown these before, give them a shot. I'm just tidying the big onions up now. All those of bees have been in the cold frame for oh no, four, six weeks. Still evidence of a bit of moisture in the neck. So as I'm tidying them up, putting them in these trays, I'm actually pointing the neck downwards to try and encourage any surplus moisture to roll out the neck and that does help reduce the rotting effect. So I'm going to carry on doing these and when I've finished I'll bring you back and show you what we've done. We've been treated to quite a few rain showers today, some of you. But I've managed to get the onions done. These are the big ones at the moment. You can see some of them have dressed quite nicely. All pointing downwards to get that last drop of moisture out of the neck. And they've got some more here. Them trays all stack on top of each other. And I've got some smaller trays with the other onions in. I'll show you as I put them on. These are the first lot of the banana shallots and that's a mixture of the Zabrun but primarily I think all of those, most of them are, are Lister. These are the red banana type shallots and these are the ones that are called the uh, long red Florence. Most of these are mishmash, I think so I had them white ones, I don't know what there was actually, but uh, the other type I think are the Vento ones. And bringing up the rear is these oddballs. That's not the variety, it's uh, the lighter coloured ones I think are what I got out of the tough ball. So you may remember I put these in the ground and they never grew, but nonetheless. And the red ones, I'm not even sure what they are. In fact I could probably have pickled these, but... Nevertheless, we'll still use them. But first of all, I'll be using these, uh, the large ones at the bottom first. The reason I put them in here is that uh, the greenhouse at the moment is uh, overladen with junk and needs a good clear out as usual. And in here, keep some dry, there's plenty of airflow. And once the greenhouse is cleared, I'll get them back in there. With the onset of the cooler nights and the damp mornings I've decided that I'm going to harvest all the remaining tomatoes that are ripe on here and what's left I'll just leave them see how they fare in the next couple of weeks. In general for me the tomatoes have performed very well particularly the outdoor ones. I suppose the ones in the greenhouse have been mediocre to okay but the outdoor ones have really excelled us up. These 12 plants in here are more the uh, crimson crush and I've had a tremendous crop of them. I've got a few more down the bottom there, different varieties, and so they've done well as well. The only one that's been a little bit disappointing is in the garden, that was a hanging bass variety, and it was a one called Tumbler, and for some reason that fruited the first time, did a real good flush, took the fruits off and nothing ever happened again, it didn't seem to grow much, so that was it. But uh, nonetheless, as I said, I'm very happy. I usually grow, say, 12 Crimson Crush, but next year I'm going to have a rethink of the quantities I'm doing. I'll probably do 12 Crimson Crush, and the other one I've been really impressed with this year is the Crimson Plum. I've got some down there, and they've really got a good crop. We've frozen quite a lot of those, jarred them, canned them. And the, and the other one is called a Summer Last. You may recall that's a patio one. It's got a little point on the bottom. Lovely flavour and all, so I'll be growing more of them. Right, I'll get these out and I'll show you what I've got at the end. 
and this is the last formal tomato harvest. As you can see, these are the cherries. The variety is called Sweet Million. It was a bit late starting cropping they were, but once we started giving, they've had a load of them again. And in the basket here, mainly the Crimson Crush. But down the bottom end, I've got some also of the Crimson Plum. So any of the tomatoes I pick now will be as probably one or two off as the ripe. While I was harvesting the last few, the ripe tomatoes here, it's quite noticeable how the blight has given these a battering. This is a variety called Sweet Million. Yet just behind them, we've got the Crimson Plum, and they look quite healthy still. So that's promising for future. This bed of tomatoes has still got quite a lot of beetroot in. Now the kill the night and the rain removing is not really much concern. But these are, most of them, at the size now where they're ready for a harvest. And rather than risk them getting too big and go woody, I'm going to lift them and store them in a cool dark place. And these will eventually end up being pickled. And that's the last crop of beetroot I've got. Notice I've got a few swedes at the top and all. Start of October, we used to start making uh, stews and stuff like that. They were all nice to go in. And I noticed on the swede, that one or two little soft spots on them, so rather than stay on the ground and rot, I've just lifted them, and they'll be probably used in the next week or two. This weekend, for me at least, sees the end of what I refer to as the big garden shows, and that's the Morven Autumn Show which also features the National Vegetable Championships sponsored by Canna. Runs from Friday until Sunday. And as of yet, I've not been able to get there, but hoping I can nip there on Sunday to have a look around. There are quite a few YouTubers, as usual, who will be entering exhibits, including Chris Evans, who's the guy who I featured on the previous video. So good luck, guys. Hope you're all successful. I haven't been to a garden show at all this year, which is unusual, mainly due to being on holiday and time constraints and stuff like that. But it'd be nice to end the year off with a visit to Morven. If you've already been there, leave a few notes in the comments. Let me know what you thought of it. These winter brassica plants are the seedling pack that I bought from the local garden centre, about £2.50, I think it was. Potting them on, they've come up really well. So now I'm going to plant them out. I'm going to put them into this spare part of the brassica bed. Uh, this bed will be used for doing the parsnips next year, so no bother about having to re manure it over the winter and that. So I'm going to pop them in, and hopefully they'll reward us early spring. So there we are, 15 plants in total. Some look better condition than others, but no, never mind. Uh, they may look a little bit close together, and I've done that deliberately. I want to try and harvest these the early part of spring when we've got hardly anything coming out of the ground. So I'm not looking for any size at all. I just want them to put a bit of growth on, maybe touch shoulders, and then we'll start harvesting. Right, let's get the net on. This is the garlic bed, and late June, early July, when I remove the crop, I'll give these a top dressing of fairly well rotted oars manure. And that's been lying in there for what, three months, four months. I've just turned that in now, let that settle down a bit, and in about another three weeks' time, I'll be planting out my garlic again. Right, I bring this one to a close on somewhat of a sad note. For those of you who watch the channel for a few years now, you'll be more than familiar with a guy by the name of Dave Taylor. He was the brummie, the guy from Birmingham, who uh, resurrected failing allotments. Uh, last couple of weeks I heard that uh, Dave had had a fall and his health wasn't too good and had been admitted to hospital. I was fortunate to pop over to see him with a fellow plot holder and little did I know that I'd be the last that I'd save him. He sadly become the victim of cancer. It was rather rapid, he deteriorated quite quickly. Dave is a really good guy, if you haven't seen the videos, I'll put some links in, do please take a look, because 
he did more for allotment tearing than any other person I know. The short time I knew him, I knew him for probably about five years. I was actually introduced to him by a guy off the site here. And uh, in that short period of time, he got involved in getting four different allotments up and running. And uh, that was a marvellous feat. He could be a cranky old bugger, Dave could, but uh, he was very likeable. He got certain mannerisms which you just had to smile at. Quite a few times I filmed him over there. I did have to delete quite a lot of the footage because what I took as normal wouldn't be accepted now. Not derogatory of people or anything, health and safety, it was, he was, uh, <laughs> but even so, he just loved his allotment and he got uh, certain things which just made me laugh and I loved being around with him and listening to his stories at all. In fact, I was introduced to him by a fellow plot holder over here, and for that I'm ever be grateful. He was a member of the Birmingham District uh, Allotment Committee or something like that. He was well respected in there, and he, he knew his way around allotments and laws and that. He got a way of encouraging people. I mean, the, the last one I went to, Long Meadow Allotments, that was in the right mess, and he, he turned that around, not on his own, but it was with the enthusiasm he generated into people and that plot turned around in no time. He, he held fun days and everything for it. So uh, one thing I'll remember Dave for, he'd, he'd always got his pipe with him. Nine times out of ten it wasn't lit, he just used it as a pacifier, as a dumb <laughs> like, but uh, he'd like light his match and throw it out the window and Nine times it's in the window, be shut his bed's back and burn a hole in his car seat. <laughs> I always remember him. Um, he was the first video I put up. Dave was what he referred to as a technophile. He didn't engross technology at all. He was like a bit of a dinosaur, but he couldn't believe when I filmed and put it on YouTube, the reaction he got from, from you, the viewers, and uh, he was just overwhelmed. And... There's a video up where he's responding to the first video that I put up and the comments and then he was just amazed at technology and moved forward and that. Good grief. So, well, I mean, in fairness, that, that might me out to be a cross between Albert Schweitzer and Mother Teresa. And the truth is, all I do is grab a spade and dig. Um, but it's very, it's, it's, it's very, uh, very gratifying for people to think I'm doing something half decent. But the one thing that I remember Dave for particularly was I was doing some filming and we went round the greenhouse and he was talking about the plants, the seedlings had got in there and he was talking about the different brassicas, the cauliflower sprouts and that. And when he come to the cabbage, he'd got a label in there, dog. And I remember saying to him, what's that Dave, dog? He says, oh, it's greyhound. I said, well, it's not greyhound. He says, I can't spell greyhound, so I just put dog. <laughs> and I actually cracked up. I think the video is out on YouTube, and I, I just I just chuckled for a good few minutes after. But yeah, well, what's the sort of these here? Are these, well, that one's marked dog. Dog? Yeah, so that's, that, that must be greyhound. Greyhound cabbage. Dog. <laughs> can't spell greyhound. Uh, and there's, there's various types of cabbage there. <laughs> Um, and some more at the back. That's my lasting legacy of Dave, is that uh, whenever I grow a, a grey and cabbage now, it'll always be known as dog. So wherever you are, Dave, keep them weeds down and stop sending so much rain. That's about it. See you later, folks. All the best and thanks for watching.